Hello everyone, welcome to On A Journey with WeWork India. Today we have Shraddha, who needs no introduction yeah. <laughs> uh, from your story, and Anirudh, who is uh, building everything AI. Um, I will let them get into the introduction of, of each of the two companies that they're building, but essentially uh, on the journey, as you guys might know already, um, is two sets of entrepreneurs, someone who has scaled and built a massive brand over uh, you know, a period of time, and uh, someone potentially trying to build and scale a, a start a brand or start up a company. And the idea is to try to share and learn from each other's journey as well as um, you know, create uh, something new out of this entire conversation if, if possible as well. So I'm going to hand it off to Anirudh to just kind of explain to everyone and all of us like what what is it that you're working on and, and what is everything AI? And, and Yeah, I mean, thank you for having me. That was a great introduction, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I guess the whole AI has become hot. I feel like the last six months or so, everyone's been talking about AI. So I decided, okay, let's jump into this bandwagon. Uh, but the goal is uh, we, we've launched like with an AI tool marketplace where you can discover different AI tools that you can use for every part of the value chain, right? Like I feel like there are 3,000 tools that have been launched in the last six months and people are feeling overwhelmed. You're like, oh my God, which tool should I use for my use case? So starting with that and then we're adding like content, we're adding services, we're adding like a knowledge layer. It's obviously just a recent, uh, you know, sort of development. This is six months. You've been on an entrepreneurial journey for, you know, for a while now. So what made you kind of pivot? Um, and for someone who's kind of starting off you know, uh, on their own journey. What is this like first six months, first 12 months like, in your opinion, would you, how could you describe it? Good question. So actually before everything AI, uh, I've done two things in this whole entrepreneurial journey. One is uh, we launched something called Master Life, which is like masterclass for life skills. We actually shot at this spot a lot. <laughs> and I was like, where's that big dining table over there? Yeah. Or the massive table over there. So, uh, so did that, did that for two and a half years and realize like personal growth is still not a, it's not a mainstream play in India yet. It's still like, where's the certification? Help me get a job. Uh, so we pivoted into a performance marketing agency. Like we essentially had to pay people salaries. Right. Uh, so did that for a good two and a half, three years. And now I feel like a lot of it's about market timing. If you get that right, and you've been able to offer a service which is average or above average, I think there'll be demand for it. So Shraddha, everyone knows <laughs> your story. I mean, if they are in any space, and especially in the startup space, and don't know yeah. about it, they're obviously under a rock. But your story has evolved a lot over a period of time. So how would you best describe it right now? Karan, first of all, uh, Thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> and I always feel very proud when I come to VMAC because uh, uh, it reminds me of the journey that you are making and you've made because I, again, would want to go on the record to say that I came to that uh, galaxy, galaxy <laughs> building when it was being made and, and you showed me something very fancy that will come, but it was like, you know, completely empty. Construction site. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was like thinking, okay, maybe this guy will do this. And uh, it's amazing. And, and especially want to call out because we've all come out of pandemic living normal life, but you've gone through the experience. And it's heartening to be here in this space and, and, and being part of this podcast. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I don't know what I would say for my journey, but I would definitely say to everyone watching and listening to us is that any journey is not a straight journey. And, and what I like is that, you know, when it comes to startups or building, we overemphasize in the last three, four years, we've overemphasized on doing things fast, young people coming and doing and making things happen and everything becoming unicorn and everyone getting funding. But I just want to say that I'm a great example, if I could be, of, of course, you could see it from different lens of someone who is not a unicorn, maybe could not scale, but I think just to create value yeah. and to create impact and to create start making sense of one's journey, you need to be in the playground for long, many years. Nothing comes, pehle sunte the that nothing happens overnight. Now I've lived, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing happens overnight. Yeah. It has taken me 
14 years and someone was saying in Ramayan that uh, even Ram came back from Vanvas. <laughs> I don't know when the Vanvas will o get over, but maybe it is uh, going to be next 14 years. But when you're doing something purposeful, when you're trying to figure out and create something which is not very selfishly intrinsic to uh, your identity, uh, but helping people and, and, and getting people to have their identities, it's a long, long journey. You're competing with everyone possible, be it a consulting firm, be it a, a VC firm, be it, a, a, you know, large media houses, AI to everything. Second and third is that anything which is not titillating, negative, sensational, but you're telling positive, good stories, the market of it has to be built. So for me, the only thing I could say is it has taken a long number of years. And second thing is that, you know, every day, it's very boring, but you have to go back and say, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this? And when you know very consistently, clearly over the years that why you're doing this, then you definitely end up building a brand. And I think your story, what I enjoy, I would be lying, is that it has a good brand. People like it. Yeah. And the people love it. And, and, and when I, I'm in the flight or something and someone will say, hey, you wrote a story <laughs> and this got me this and that. So that is still a kick that drives. Yeah, that must, I mean, that feeling must be amazing and you know I've been also part of tech sparks and at tech sparks and you you see uh, one just people love you like when you yeah. get on stage it's just you know they have Mexican wave and all the time <laughs> 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 that, 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 that happening uh, but more importantly I think that uh, you know the vantage point that you have um, no one really talks about the business model of it, right? Because a lot of the time the content creators are the ones who are either interviewing the, you know, the person that is on the other side. Uh, and I think very rarely you get to hear from someone who's built a content brand. How do you, you know, feed your employees? How does like everything really work? So if you had to describe that, how could you describe, you know, the business model of your story? Where does all the money come from? Where does the money go out? Yeah, that I also keep on thinking about. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, so okay, I worked with Times of India and yeah. I worked with uh, CNBC. I yeah. was in Mumbai and I had the great vantage point of working with the management, the, uh, the founder, the builders of uh, uh, both the brands. It gave me a great insight into how print and TV works. But having said that, digital is now digital. When I started your story, the total digital internet users in India at that time were six million and the only ads that were emerging were Google ads and I still remember I'm just giving you a context so that people understand that when I started uh, your story someone called me from a media buying agency and said listen can you send newsletters to your subscribers I said absolutely she asked that time 2008 how many subscribers you have and I said very proudly 800 and she started <laughs> laughing uh, at me on the you know on the call itself she said okay she didn't <laughs> know what to say. I said, how much will you pay me for this? And she said, you know, we talk to only people who have a million or more subscribers. We are working with Times of India. We're working with Money Control yeah. that time. So to me, that was a great learning that I realized that if I'm going to do the traditional media, go the traditional media way to generate revenue, I'll never make money. And that also is very interesting because I started thinking of your story not as a media platform, but as a place where you could, you know, create, get entrepreneurs, get young people, get data. Get, an ecosystem. Basically. Yes, yeah. and an ecosystem, a platform. And, and once you have that, then content just becomes top of the funnel. Right. Because what your story does throughout the year, if you see uh, over the years, what we've done is be working with the largest of enterprises yeah. in terms of uh, creating very either it's customized events, engagements, content, reports, and, and, and uh, with some of the top 10, 20 brands. So there, then the money that started coming, because none of the media was offering this that listen I want to have conversation with uh, interesting startups in AI space yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 so that became the model so if I was you know let's say building something in the AI space and just to break down maybe what you're saying is um, one I'm building you know a tool or a model like chat GPT which essentially is gonna you know bring super efficiency across the board and don't really really have a revenue model to it yet but like oh, you know like whatsapp or something like that i'm just going to end up you know 
containing uh, all of the users in the world and you know getting them on onto that or i am creating something that maybe like adobe is making in terms of you know it's it's right. thing on photoshop which is going to help me you know create efficiencies across my creative designers or whatever it is and then i would look at maybe what i'm saving a company and essentially charge some sort of licensing cost as an alternative to having like a human resource attached to it or yeah so i feel like you won't replace humans now the productivity is going up right yeah. like there's a tool called right sonic where let's say as a company you're putting out 15 articles a month you could use a tool to put out let's say 75 articles a month obviously there's a human layer which is get the tone right get the content right but i'm not seeing humans being replaced it's just like helping the output go up uh, tremendously and i think to your point in terms of i brought up the monetization in terms of people are working on the models but like mm. i saw a video yesterday of like sam altman saying like hey you can compete with us on the model but we have the best model llm model out there so uh i think vcs are also maybe funding stuff in the generative ai space yeah uh which is more tool based yeah but it's fascinating so i need if you had to like you know tell her or tell me about some of the tools like as part of you know sure. maybe like an everything ai marketplace that you are right. seeing with your vantage point that would right. blow our minds like yeah. drastically change uh, you know either of the businesses what what would for you say sure. for sure for sure so i think in terms of content creation i mean chat gpt has become the layer uh, but there's like for example we're doing this for a few clients where you have this content you can use a tool like steve.ai where you just put the blogging content and automatically creates a video and then the video can sit on your blog for like engagement now you can convert that into shorts using twoshot.ai you can use dubdub ai to like translate that into different languages so like all of this you can do within a week i think versus like oh my god how do i translate all this content accurately uh which might take a lot more time right uh but i mean so many things i feel like the uh use case is a lot for solo entrepreneurs like if you're just starting off you're like man how do i get my branding going mm. there's a tool called luka which is l o o k a which is just like i like these colors i like you know this pattern and then hey give me a logo and it's and the entire brand kit for like 12 dollars like it's not even comparable yeah uh, but you know i have a point there you can do that with uh, at scale you can create your brand because earlier you had to find people to do that yeah but there i see the dance is that today everyone can build that logo and interesting unique ones but to build a brand yeah is where ai will have to you know that's a different yeah. journey yeah like so if you know what to build and you have distribution i think you'll win so but you know i mean i was thinking about a very similar thing and you know, we, i think we can both relate to that is that if i was today starting up and the amount of maybe people or time that it took me to reach from like 0 to 10 right you know a lot of it we we like hired friends people that we yeah. knew you know yeah. knew uh built like you know it became like a snowball and then it started becoming an organization or whatever it is and you know suddenly grew into whatever it is right now and then with you know some of these kind of things like if i was resourceful enough and maybe you know knew how to use it enough um i feel that there would have been a drastic difference in like how we finally you know built into like the big uh organization or like organism that a company you know becomes i think structurally itself from ground up it would be so different like culture would be so different um where it might you might actually see that an organization that sim, you know of a similar scale actually has far less people but those people are doing you know much higher quality jobs that you're you know that you're saying and the speed of 0 to 10 is just like so much faster because you just got through so much of that yeah. noise you know a lot you know, but i'll disagree to that because i you, you the, the efficiency definitely what you're saying will increase yeah, yeah. the efficiency ho jayega matlab and i no no debate like about that logo ban jayega name ban jayega and everything but i just feel that the journey to actually build a brand or to actually build an organization or True. to actually build your your own unique yeah. organization will require you like will require yeah. a lot of failing learning the same mistakes but yes the i agree that a lot of 
वो जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव वर्क में जो टाइम गया है दैट विल बी कट डाउन या हाउ हाउ आर यू लुकिंग एट इट given that it's also an offline play right for you we are looking at it you know i think very much in similar ways as as everyone is like what type of productivity efficiency you know can we build i mean uh, the thing that i like always keeps me up is we obviously want to grow like really big but how do i grow without my costs increasing yeah. you know ex- as much as my growth that's like the entire game right is like your cost should be coming down you know either the same rate as you're going up or like much faster and i think that something like ai obviously is going to help with doing that i mean for us there's a lot of transactional you know things like for example billing uh you know uh, 60000 people every month that has to happen a lot of that happens you know manually um our uh, members raise tickets or like support tickets the hvacs not working the you know bathrooms not clean things like that which right now flows through you know like our community teams mm-hmm. they spend almost like 6 8 hours a day just going through tickets mm-hmm. answering them yeah. um you know sending those tickets to the teams that really need to solve it maybe back end operations or whatever it is um so a lot of that stuff can you know clearly get get automated and actually free up a community uh, you know teams time to focus on sitting down with a member actually you know helping them on an experience side of things like connecting them with another you know another member who's doing something similar so it's just going to free up a lot of that stuff um we're using ai in uh, you know behind our cctvs as like a a program it helps us analyze how people are using the space helps us design more efficiently so just as an example we used to build like eight or nine toilet cubicles you know for both men and women uh previously and then we started to realize that actually this queue is uh you know something like 40 60 men to women or whatever rather than 50 50 that Using you know we were uh, looking at and so that helped us reduce that you know cost queue and you know create better efficiencies in design or whatever it is so there's there's so much but now i go to every meeting and like they're like oh no we should use ai to do this or we should use <laughs> ai to do that and that's what worries me a little bit because i think people who don't even really understand it are just saying that you know it's going to like be this magic wand that mm. uh, that solves everything and that ends up yeah i mean i don't think it solves it but it's like your i mean from a marketing standpoint i think it's like a marketing associate or a customer success person uh but yeah we kind of jumped into the section which was called you know cut the jargon which really one means to you know kind of break everything down to its bones and and really understand both of uh, you know both the businesses and and what you guys are doing so the next section of what we're going to is is probably my least favorite but we'll get into <laughs> it which is you get to ask me <laughs> yeah uh, uh uh something and uh, try to keep this as open as possible so i'm going to leave the floor to to you guys because you know we i mean me and shada actually do this more often than you think yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why i do still love asking do i just love the arc of your journey i like you know to me it's like it's been like this and i hope that again i'm not hoping that it's just like that yeah. i'm sure there'll be hardship but the question i want to ask you is that if you had to openly share with everyone that today what's your what's that insecurity right like which you've not been able to completely make sense or you know put in place mm. and you're still insecure about it i think that um the thing that frustrates me the most is that you know when we started this journey or as we were you know scaling um i think a lot of times you know we've done everything right and there's been a lot in a short span of like 5 years of external stuff that you know was absolutely you know out of our control that you know got us in very short periods of time uh, more than maybe like most you know most journeys have been because there was not just things like covid or mm. you know whatever it is but you know the brand itself has had its own you know story in the last like like 5 years so um i think the thing that frustrates me the most is that with you know showing up every day weekends you know building the team uh in the last few years turning the business around 
you know, we've really not been able to come out of that shadow of, you know, this overarching WeWork story. So, like, that is a little bit of, uh, I would say, something that, you know, always puts us back as like, you know, how much more do we really need to show and do to kind of like, you know, step out of that and for everyone to really appreciate the arc. I think that, you know, not, not everyone really sees that. Um, but I wanted to, sorry, I want to bring that up. Actually for both of you, I mean, it's awesome to see both of you vulnerable, but the arc of your story, at least from this perspective, is super positive. We work India as a story has also been really positive. I mean, yeah. I know what's happening in terms of valuations and things for like that. But everybody talks about how it's just, as a standalone, still expanding. I mean, I'm hearing about like new buildings opening up. Yeah. I'm coming to Prestige Central after a while. I go to the other one, and it's packed. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's never been this packed. So, uh, kudos to you. I mean, it's. Yeah, and like you, you know, we see that when everyone sees that, which is what makes it, you know, even more frustrating. But, but I, I think just think you're tough on yourself because you, if if you see from a lens of time yeah. frame, right? Then you have. I really feel, and you'll see it for yourself. You just have to give it a year more. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. But then but again, that's your that's nature. That's my insecurity. Yeah, that's your, <laughs> but that's your nature to but be tough, also, also, right? Tough. Yeah, 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 yeah on yourself. Yeah. And the second question I want to ask you, and I'll come to you also. Like I have to now ask the question. Is that, <laughs> like you know, one of the things that is, of course, and I don't know if you hear this. You are. You come from privilege. Yeah. And uh, uh, straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, it's true. <laughs> I don't come from it, so I notice such people yeah. very closely. So you come from privilege. Uh, do you think? Of course, it has its amazing uh, uh, strengths, and but do you think that sometimes, when it comes to Vivek India journey, uh, the true appreciation also? Do you feel it also doesn't happen because of the background that you come from? Um, because it's easy like, for him. I, I, you know, I feel that sometimes people do feel like that, and I actually also think it probably is a lot easier, you know, for me than it has been for someone like you. Obviously, like you know, migrating cities, coming, starting like a completely like you know new brand and whatever it is that. Uh, no, but I just don't want to be in your place because it would be harder for me. <laughs> because just, you know, for yeah, all the and, hard and work that you've done and I have and done, we I both think have worked I hard. actually sometimes envy the freedom of, yeah. you know, on the other side. Like, if it was, uh, you know, just like a completely clean slate versus, versus obviously doing that. But that to me has also actually been a huge, you know, motivator since I was very, very young. Even before I got into this, which was like, I want to always make sure that I'm not in a shadow. Like, you know, you just want yeah. to like have your own own thing built. So like even when I started off, I never went straight into the family business. It was, you know, I wanted to set up like a business, do it on my own. Uh, you know, like uh, I was getting a loan from the bank at like 14% or whatever it is that when we were starting off the business, you know, the one thing, like, then uh, at that time, my dad said, is like, okay, you're taking it from the bank. I'll just give it to you at, you know, 14%. And we paid that off in, like, a year the same way would have, we would have done with the bank. But it was important to me that I know for myself that I can do something, you know, on, on its own uh, and, and create, like, a business. You know, I'm asking you, Karan, this question because I know that you've done it on your own. I've yeah. seen yeah. that you've done it. Like one, so that's why the question also becomes But at important. the same time, it's, you know, like, this massive support system that no one else would have or, you know, a, a solo entrepreneur would never have. Like, today I have my brother and my dad. If, like, we're in a situation like COVID or something like that, at least there's someone who, yeah. you know, you can sit back and like there's reassurance, there's like a little bit of a safety blanket or whatever it is. There's, you know, the first thing that happened when the global WeWork thing was happening is that, you know, we made sure everyone in India knew this is like an embassy company and not like a yeah. WeWork company. So those backfalls were definitely there. But uh, yes, yeah, like you have to prove yourself, you know, a lot, lot more before people even give you that that credit, so True. Yeah, that's, that's definitely. Yeah. I actually had a question for you so yeah. in terms of uh, like how do you maintain your balance? Like what's your 
because obviously there's now you're going to be a dad, I'm assuming. <laughs> there's we yeah. work, which is taking up most of your mind space, right? So, how do you kind of make sure you have your releases? Where where is that for you? Oh, just like very simple. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it rituals, but it's like a discipline that I have. Like I have to, you know, I wake up in the morning one hour before I do anything, and that like one hour is essentially mine. You know, a lot of time my wife's like, like just stay in the, you know, stay in bed. Like, why are you waking? I was like, no, I have to wake up. I literally just sit outside. My dog sits on my lap. Like, I read the newspaper. That's it. And then it's one hour of going to the gym. You know, or some form of workout, which has to happen in the morning before. So, I think that one part is like a very centering, you know, part uh, for me, and like an anchor, if you you know really want to call it that. Uh, and then my weekends, I try to keep as work, you know, free as as possible because I just. Monday to Friday gets crazy. It's like travel, this that. So even if I'm traveling, I'll try to make it back home by Friday night, evening, no matter you know what, unless it's like something that I can't avoid. So that uh, just gives me balance in being able to like separate it. But honestly, I think the the thing is, just, I just love even the Monday to Friday yeah, part really. of it. It's just not something yeah. that you know certain things you do that drain you of energy like you'll you know go out go to an event and have to chit chat with like you know 100 people and go shake people's hands like <laughs> i will be drained I'm like get me out of here like as as quickly as possible but if i were to sit in a meeting room even if it's from like you know 9 to 6 and like solve problems i'll i can you know just do that all day and i get energy out of it and i'll probably like go home and feel even more uh, energized from it Sweet. But, yeah. I want to, you know, maybe move into a section where um, from from sort of like the purpose of why you guys are doing things, um, you know, to the team and like, you know, all of that stuff that helps you and, and people that have, you know, I think there's something that entrepreneurs miss talking about a lot is um, that it's, it's never just a solo journey. Obviously, there's like a solo part to it, but everyone has, uh, and we all have people that have helped us build whatever, you know, we're building. So, I mean, Shada, from your standpoint, like you to your team or the team to you, how is that relationship? And like over time, how have you built that to, you know, become like your support system and any advice that you would give to someone who's building a team, uh, you know, on how they should go about that? You know, so uh, it's a very good question, and I'm a, like, I, I, I started it in 2008. Nobody believed in your story. So I was a single founder that time, and uh, uh, it has its advantages and disadvantages, but I would say the team has been more of an extended family for me. I wouldn't have survived and done your story uh, if it was not for the people who were there, because I've gone through a lot. When I started, my mother passed away in 2010. You know, I've talked about it, tragic accident. I was away in the hospital for the longest time, and 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 you know, and you'll understand when we start something, it's a you know baby, and you want it to run. And and there were months I was under such massive level of depression that I just didn't show up or didn't turn up. And 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 I still remember that there was this young guy in turn who managed and he ran it. And they were freelancers and people and youngsters who ran it. And how can one not have gratitude? Because today, if I am where I am, 14 years, I say with so much of pride, if <laughs> these people <laughs> had not in those months yeah. uh, every day worked. And what was I paying? Nothing, actually. Right. 3,000 rupees and nothing. And a <laughs> lot of love and a lot of stories, which they tell me that you only tell stories. Is uh, uh, that time when a lot of people then joined from Bitspilani, you know, had a lot of ingenious, smart people because they were very eclectic, different people. They didn't think about stories. They were not from, nobody was from media. And then these guys brought different kind of thinking. They challenged me and, 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 and somewhere it felt like to me, 
last 14 years your story to me people working have been family if there is a yeah. confrontational conversation I'm i'll turn up very away. much like that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i see a lot of that's why i love <laughs> you also grown up <laughs> i'm elder to you but i'm also growing up so those things are very important to have a conversation right like it's not one sided because as entrepreneur again i don't want to say hey my team is everything of course my team is everything and my team has, i am here because sitting with you because of that team which has worked very hard but at the same time uh, i also want to tell entrepreneurs one of the sad things i feel but doesn't talk about that it's very hard for entrepreneurs too right because a team at the end of the day grows up and as a child people grow up and we have questions <laughs> our parents yeah. uh, so the team questions us and sometimes entrepreneurs are cornered for everything they so 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 yeah you just have to the only thing i would say karan to this is i am a very firm believer in only one thing the world shows up as you show up if i show up as confident authentic person 99% of the time world will show up like that and uh, no i fully agree and i can relate heavily to the growing up you know part and <laughs> for, for us like we work our culture was always seen as like you know we so beer at the workplace and like it's just you know oh, crazy it was like I heard yeah <laughs> i was jealous i have to tell you i was jealous yeah. and i was like okay, we all love the big party what monsters. is he doing yeah and uh, so we we still do a lot of the the fun stuff but we now are doing it in a way more grown up way and sometimes you know um uh, like for me a lot of my friends were part of the company or have been part of the company and i'm also you know relatively young uh, or have always been like the average age to you know to the organization that 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 we have so uh, sometimes to like have that discipline to separate yourself you know even in those fun like yeah. situations and not be able to go as crazy as like you know everyone else is uh, just so that <laughs> i don't know tomorrow they don't write an article on your story that <laughs> no, this guy no, no, no. was like you know hanging from the rafters or whatever at this office party but uh, yeah i think a lot, a lot of that discipline has to you know has to definitely come in um, you're at that stage where you can still you know do some of that craziness like how are you spending time with your team how are you how are you like building building everything yeah else? sure um i mean i think the thing that you touched upon in terms of that analogies i think is pretty spot on uh i think the other part that i struggle with usually is like uh mismatched expectations in terms of like effort um and i think that's something i just have to come to terms with it's like yeah i think just in terms of turn around times and expecting how things are going to be delivered Uh, you're obviously going to give it a lot more uh and you mostly going to work on the weekend and you can't expect that from other people i think that's that's one um uh, i've done a solo journey it's not fun at all i don't know how the two of you have done it for so long uh i feel you like mean like without a without a co-founder both master life and yeah uh, without a co-founder and i feel like Where can I distribute the stress? It's like here. Let's talk to the wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I and then it comes agree. back to you. So uh, <laughs> in multifold. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but that's that's. I mean, you say. should honestly. What what's really uh, worked for me is I actually do distribute it amongst the team, and a lot of times just had like an upfront conversation. I mean, like you know, COVID as an example, there was. you know you have to stay positive and like right. be positive yeah. but i think like with your close circle if you just blatant and open and be like listen i'm like sinking yeah. so you got to like we got to figure it out yeah. together um Can yeah I place it like not the free food or free beer <laughs> it's this yeah. the the uh, people are very smart it the honesty to say listen i am in shit i am feeling yeah. depressed yeah. and yeah but yeah. that vulnerability doesn't come often i mean it takes some effort to be like hey i'm going to be vulnerable in this direction right which is your team so yeah um i know i don't know any other way like people <laughs> <laughs> that, you know you just have to sometimes and have been called emotional and again this is for entrepreneurs and maybe this is for women entrepreneurs that there there has been such a tag to me oh she's so emotional or she's so straightforward or she speaks her mind 
प्लीज आई एम नॉट सम नमूना ऑल ऑफ अस शुड स्पीक आर माइंड एंड नथिंग टू लूज बट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली इज इज दैट इफ यू आर जस्ट बीइंग योरसेल्फ एंड 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 अनफॉर्चूनेटली अनफॉर्चूनेटली यू आर अ वुमन देन यू जस्ट टैग इमोशनल व्हाई इमोशनल लाइक आई एम पैशनेट like i am very driven or i i love this and and that's why to all the young girls who are starting up i would say just wear with a badge of honor being emotional i would love to hear for both both of you all um what is that anchor and you know just again feeding off this like what is the anchor and who are maybe the people around you that keep you anchored um and uh, you know has there been a particular part of the journey or in the last few years where you've really seen you know that kick in go ahead okay <laughs> you know for me my biggest anchor was my mother and and i lost her i did everything to please and impress and <laughs> make her <laughs> happy and uh, and most middle class people and i'm sure all of us look at our parents and somewhere they getting so yeah my mother had a very difficult life and she was everything and i'm sad that i just started your story and i lost her so she was she cried when i had started that you know you're destroying your life every time you go and do something random and she never gets to she didn't get to see that you know it was not bad a decision uh, so yes i missed my mother and that also made me realize that i've always been a very alone person a lonely person and that's a comfortable space for me but why i said earlier is that the way you show up the world shows up to you today i worked on myself where i see every day make the effort to see the love the goodness the kindness of people around me because then you have a very victim mindset that hey i am doing <laughs> i am being so nice i am the happy person i am the cheerleader in the room but then you forget to see that hey for you to live the cheerleader role or to be the happy person there are very many different people who are actually cheering you along yeah. and and to me there are so many people my sisters my dogs i can't imagine my life last i lost my mother i got the dogs came and and to me they are my babies and uh, uh, so many friends so many people from your story and i thought and i'm blessed that way again i'll say that but the people have loved me and and just the appreciation and not feeling alone in that i feel very awkward you won't believe that in social settings i feel very awkward this conversation i'll flow but if you put me in a party or something i'll be hiding somewhere <laughs> because i just can't do yeah. fake conversation i just feel very alone so i've worked on myself and the more i'm working on myself i see love around me and i see a great community i'm going tomorrow flying to germany uh, uh, for an event and then denmark and and you'll be surprised that people in germany people in denmark the kind of love that they're giving and that is happening because i'm able to see so my request to answer your question just for people and especially entrepreneurs and anyone and youngsters you're feeling lonely i understand what it means with but just you know make it a habit to every day see the love because the, when you start focusing and seeing the love then there are so many people who are giving you love yeah um what about you on here similar actually i mean obviously there's family uh, my parents live towards yalanka so i feel like whenever i feel need to feel like I need to get pampered I think I go there <laughs> yeah maybe for a few days after yeah. that they start to and they always you. have like the safe for me like the safe puri so like tomatoes and onions will be cut and I like mix it and eat it so I think that's one obviously like my wife i mean i feel like every 2 3 weeks i have this like weird existential crisis like what am i doing with my life so <laughs> someone to just calm me down say you know what like yeah, relax <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah i know the, the same question you know ai again it's a little bit uh i mean it's like one of the sexy trend words right now and uh you know it has a lot of uh, stuff floating around the internet around it but to monetize of it and if today i'm you know running your business or the way that you're thinking about building your business how do how does it how is it going to work good question i think boys on the kind of business you want to build like if you want to build a vc funded business i think it's like you take the model approach like can you build another model can you build another tool which can disrupt a certain space like chat gpt i think uh but i can tell you how people are monetizing today primarily 
uh, obviously they're creating tools for every use case. So like for my, how do I make marketing better? How do I use AI for SEO? How do I use AI for like design and yeah. productivity, right? So you have a monetization there. Courses are coming out. So your story could look into that, I think, as, as a play. Uh, I think you're also seeing like all the micro businesses, which are like ten to $30,000 per month kind of play, which is uh, you have newsletters, you have, uh, uh, I guess, like sponsored content, you have marketplaces. Yeah. So I think like everyone's trying to figure out their own piece. And, and it's funny, like I'm seeing people actually buy prompts, right? Like let's say you have Chad GPT and it's like people have put a, a collection together of like a hundred prompts with like $19 and I, pe I know people are making $10,000 a month. What do you mean by that? So what's happening today is there's a tool, yeah. but people don't necessarily know how to use the tool to get maximum juice out of it. So there are, let's say, creators and influencers that are coming out and saying, hey, if you want to build a website using ChatGPT, yeah. here are the set of steps that you can use or prompts. And you want the collection of- I mean, I, I was also at one, watching some podcasts where there's something like a prompt engineer as a new, new role created on you know, the, potentially on also, the side. Yeah. yeah, which is just someone prompting a model. Essentially. Yeah, so so I think that'll that'll become kind of ubiquitous pretty quickly. But if that's primarily on the dev side. I think like they're getting paid two hundred two fifty k to actually use <laughs> Chat GPT to actually come up with like ten x more, more code or more yeah. productivity. So code. if you if you <laughs> had to, I don't know, like extrapolate it two years or three years into the future you know, like as an operator of this business and say, you know, like think of some of the places where a you could use places, it. A lot of places, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like a lot of stories which are very regular stories would be written by this to make stories better, to research. Like for example, now you, st like if I want to do study about WeWord, right? Like what has happened in the last two, three years, if I have to put that input in my story, yeah. right? Of course you could do Google search, earlier you would do searching, but today you can do it so much more efficiently, yeah. right? And, and that brings more layers to your own story. So one is, at, and, and of course there's so many mundane, like I said, press release who are funding, who are same announcement goes mm. to everyone. Everyone so covers is, same this things. This is like, you know, with, with people and creative talent, essentially, there's like, everyone has this clear thumbprint or like fingerprint, right? Like you can, you can distinguish yourself from the other. With this coming in, how do you feel, you know, what's going to stop, let's say, the Ken or whatever it is, writing a very similar story? I wish they do and become <laughs> positive. Everyone should be positive. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. But how do you create the differentiation? No, in, I, in I, that's where I'm saying. To me, it's also a very good opportunity. But I just think, like, for example, conversation that we are having here, tomorrow there are hundreds of podcasts. It is incumbent upon you yeah. that you bring out the best content because you could produce this but if nobody watches it, then you will prepare, you will look at the final edit, you will look at... So there'll be more focus on quality. Mm, and, yeah. and, and, and we will have to up our game. There is not... Like today, if I'm interviewing you or we are having a conversation, we'll have to up our game because people uh, will go for quality. I see this as a great opportunity yeah. because great art will be created, uh, great content, great conversation will be created because a lot of mediocrity can be put through chat GPT. Okay, last section, a lot more fun. Uh, Did you get through that list? Which I you have no idea, but, <laughs> but I'm told that I'm doing okay and no one has like, you know, it's a good jumped, into, jumped yeah. into the conversation. <laughs> um, you guys, it's called Freaky Friday. So you're gonna switch roles. If you were running your story, oh, wow. Shraddha, if you were running everything AI, uh, what would, what would you do? What would you do differently? Is there a direction you would take that, uh, you know, be completely different and... Uh... Do we also get to switch WeWork? As okay, why don't we do, why don't we do to the, to the, what is this, to the left. So you get to be your story. She can be WeWork oh, and I, I will be everything. Be <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, go for it. I think I would get into fintech. <laughs> Some way or the other, right? I am. Yeah. Oh. Brilliant. Start giving out loans <laughs> to yeah. people. I think fintech definitely might be interesting. I think because you have distribution brand, like, can we be in a hundred businesses? Like, literally, that should be the play. Anirudh, 
Your words are my command. <laughs> I will. This year, your yeah. story, First your capital. First investment and everything. Your yeah. capital. <laughs> lending to debt to, Let's do it. Uh, to yeah, equity. To pieces, yes. I think that would be the case. But you know, like Times does this, right? You've never... Add for equity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they used to... That was a big part True. of Times model in the, in the past as well. Um, yeah. No, but I agree with you. Capital. Yeah. Capital. Place to be. Manifesting capital, yeah. yes, yes. Have a conversation with Kunal Shah, obviously, yeah. Karan, and then be like, hey, what can we do <laughs> as, a, as a collaboration with Cred? What will I do if I were running WeWork? I don't think so I'll do anything different because I just, <laughs> honestly, I don't know about other WeWork, so I don't want to generalize, but I love uh, uh, this WeWork. Maybe I'll do, I don't know, you might be already doing, but I will give this space for free for a lot of community <laughs> events on weekends, Sundays. Like if you could be anyone, yeah. girls uh, want to do some event for, and for good causes, right? It has to be uh, for more purposeful causes because again, I would say at least for Bangalore, why should the things happen in hotels and they're so expensive? So, so give back community kind of stuff. Uh, other than that, I just love the energy. There's something about WeWork uh, uh, that I would really not like to. I mean, it's the government that says, the only thing I can do is stay away from entrepreneurs <laughs> and let them run. So I'll say that the only thing I'll do is stay away from WeWork and let you run. That's because kind, but no, I'm but sure. <laughs> no, I just but think true. you don't know like what all shit that goes on. In the but bar. that's a great yeah. job that you're yeah. doing. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but the weekend you. thing is a good idea. We do do events, you know, startup ish events, which are not maybe for, uh, you know, NGO specifically, not but NGOs we do for, the, the, eco have to be. for yeah. the ecosystem. We do do a lot of like free stuff, and we, you know, definitely can do a lot more. Mm. Uh, more, more recent, I've been on my teams, you know, had to monetize as much as possible. Yeah. So we, no, so let's we talk. Said. We can uh, monetize it together. I'd love yeah. to partner on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, on everything, yeah. I, I mean, I'm actually one of those, you know, I've been, I'm subscribed to ChatGPT. I've started like using the plugins. I try to like get my family holiday planned on, on, on something like that. Uh, I just think that you need someone or, you know, companies need someone to take away the noise around it. And, and if, you know, by building a marketplace, um, I would focus a lot on the actual education and implementation side of, you know, certain tools and like direct companies or people to avoid falling into, you know, certain traps or, or, or you know, uh, that. And uh, I think if you're able to couple, you know, that honest approach with also providing the tools, um, there's like a differentiation to be made because you know today is just like so much out there you don't know what's really gonna uh, last and what's really right for the business and everyone wants to sell their product so like a filter to companies that can you know truly honestly tell me how this will benefit me uh, is is what I would you know definitely look at and yeah yeah I think it's one. just like Maybe champion the cause of responsible AI. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the word. It's not something I heard from someone. Responsible AI and conscious engineering. Conscious, because uh, the w one of the biggest fears with AI is that it will get into our consciousness. And, and then to me, that just championing that, because in a country of 1.4 billion people, AI is a great opportunity, but we cannot ignore India needs 10 million jobs for its young every year, for the next 10 years. So just being responsible from that angle is also so important. So that what Karan is saying, just awareness, yeah. maybe that championing. That fits into the education layer also. Like yeah, how it's, adapt with it's, it's, it's the, I mean, if I have to draw a parallel to, let's say, like a tech agency, you know, or whatever that is really what exists, you know, today, I just, it just sucks money and I don't really get <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like the output that I need <laughs> for, for what, what I'm doing. So, you know, if, if we're through these tools or through AI or through like an, so a partner that can really consciously like tell me exactly yeah. and, you know, and you use some of these tools to help the business in a, in a real way yeah. instead of just trying to, you know, get, get me to dump money into, into some of this stuff. Um, I think that's massively beneficial. I mean, like, 
you know, it's like being uh, building an authentic brand around it where I know that I'm going to get, you know, the honest direction. I mean, even today, like consulting, if I go to a McKinsey or ENY just to get a consulting thing of whether I should even implement it, you know, it's going to cost me like 70 lakhs at the most, I mean, at the very least to just do that whole exercise and for what, you yeah. know, I don't really know what, what happens at the end of it. So, That's good point. yeah. All right. Um, with that, I want to thank you guys for such an amazing conversation and, you know, really sort of being vulnerable, opening up. And I hope that entrepreneurs who watch this or anyone really who watches this finally kind of draw some parallel relation, you know, relation to what we spoke about. And thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you for I, having us. Yeah. You know, uh, I have to say that uh, it felt like we we're having conversation in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs>